if yp equals a t cubed, then yp prime minus 2 over t yp is equal to this. Am I right? Okay? Because you never can be sure of that. Okay? <laughs> P prime minus 2 over T Y P equals T cubed over 18 provided 2 A T cubed equals T cubed over 18, right? And it follows that A is not one ninth, it's one thirty sixth. See, you can't trust me. Okay? Make sense? general solution is thus, this. If we check this, is this true? Well, it's easy to take the derivative of this, right? Y prime is um, 2AT plus then the derivative of t to the fourth over 36 is t over 9. Right? And then it's minus 2 over t times AT squared plus t to the fourth over 36 is that equal to t cubed over 18 it looks like I made a mistake it be bizarre because it's never happened before oh no that's right okay okay now we're, we're just doing straightforward stuff. You can do this as well as I can. You don't have to necessarily copy it down. You can work it out later because you're going to have to go to class in a minute. Okay? But what we see then is this is just 2AT minus 2AT and that's from this term and this term Okay? And then it's plus t over 9 minus t cubed, and it's not t over 9, it's t cubed over 9, t cubed over 18 This comes from this term and this term, which came from your y particular. So right there is the part that comes from your particular solution. This is zero. Okay? And this is what's left over from your particular solution, and it checks out. Okay? Make sense? 
Yes. <laughs> and it's kind of neat the way that works out. And there's a lot of formal properties, the property of superposition and stuff that we'll talk about that's illustrated by this. So I'm showing it to you without naming it. So when I name it, you have a basis for understanding what in the blazes I'm talking about. Okay? Then I can refer back to remembering that example, how we did this. Okay? So next week we're going to get into a more formal presentation and classification of differential equations. If you had a first order linear equation and now you've got a first order linear homogeneous and a non-homogeneous equation, and everybody knows exactly what I mean by that, right? Well, maybe not, but it's simple. Once you've seen it, if I start holding forth about these terms without having seen examples, I don't think you're going to understand it as well. But having seen examples now, you can see what the structure of this thing is and you can kind of see where we're going, okay? And then we refine what we're doing and develop other tricks and techniques.